Hi, I'm Nina Atchison and welcome to Teachers Talk, where we explore the lives of real teachers in Adventist Schools Australia. With me today I have Kyron Jackson, chaplain from Kempsey Adventist School. Kyron, welcome. Thank you. It's great to have you here today. Kyron, I'd love to hear a bit about your past, your history and how God has led you, um, particularly into education. Yep. So tell me a bit about where you grew up and, and some of your childhood experiences. Where did you grow up? Uh, I was born in Sydney. Yep. Uh, the sand and I uh, at the age of one I moved to Norfolk Island uh, right. with my parents who dad was a minister and uh, mum a teacher okay. and spent five years on Norfolk uh, which was great. So did you go to school at school there or? Yeah mum actually was a, a teacher of a small Adventist school on the island uh, okay. that had varying numbers between sort of nine and fourteen small schools so I was sort of looked after there by my father um, and he used to play with the kids at lunchtime but it was and then I spent my first year of, of schooling there uh, for kindergarten. Okay, yeah. so do you remember who your first teacher was and did they have a big impact on you? Yeah, my uh, first teacher was my mum. Oh, really? So, yeah, <laughs> which was um, a unique experience. Probably a bit of a hard thing for me at that time to actually uh, work, you know, determine and relate to, to mum as a teacher because all I'd known her as was as mum. Yeah, 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 so. yeah. Right, so she only taught you for one year? Just one year. I think she couldn't handle it. Yeah, <laughs> just too much for her. <laughs> So then you moved back um, back to Australia after that, or, or did you move? We moved to else? Tasmania. Okay. Yeah, we spent five years on Norfolk Island, and then five years in Tasmania. Right. Right. And uh, Mum also taught down there, and Dad was a minister at the Launceston Adventist Church. So. Wow. So you've had very prominent family figures in your life, by the sound of it, who have been very involved in church ministry, either in yeah. education or, or or church leadership in ministry. Yeah. Um, tell me a bit more about your family. Um, have you grown up in a, a very loving, warm family? Tell me a yeah, bit more I've about that. Yeah, I've got an awesome family. I've had such a good uh, child, such a good upbringing. Uh, basically, yeah, I had the five years on Norfolk and five years in Tasmania, but uh, during that period of time, uh, a place that I always associate with uh, such strong and fond memories is uh, known as the farm, which is where my grandparents, uh, what I call Mama and Papa, live, or yeah. Megan, Gordon, Kane, and. Uh, each year or most, most Christmases would head back to the farm and would have uh, massive, you know, Christmas celebrations. We'd spend, you know, a week or two in the house with 25, you know, extended family mes members, all the cousins and aunties and uncles and we'd, you know, have concerts and right. eat lots of food and yeah. round up cattle and sheep and it was a, yeah, an awesome, awesome experience for me as a child having a really... Uh, a great sense of uh, love from the family and support and yeah really yeah yeah and I think probably just belonging to something bigger than yourself as a child and knowing that you that they all love and support you that's that's really important isn't it as, a, as a, an adult or as a young child yeah so. absolutely I think it really has an impact upon uh, your future as an adult having a really stable childhood with a, a strong family and uh, provides a really good platform I think for life so yeah that's great yeah. so after Tasmania where did you move and and I guess sounds like you moved around a bit because your dad was a minister yep. um, where did you head to after that uh, at the age of 12 moved to uh, Newcastle from Tasmania and uh, started at Newcastle Adventist School what is now known as Macquarie College and uh, yeah had a, had a great time in Newcastle uh, Dad was a pastor of Charlestown uh, Adventist Church and yeah, spent, spent probably a good chunk of my, my time uh, from year six to the end of year 12 at the one school, which was Newcastle Adventist School and became Macquarie College. So, so Karen, tell me, did you attend Adventist schools throughout your educational experience? Uh, the first school I went to in kindergarten was an Adventist school on Norfolk, but then after that, when we moved to Tasmania, uh, I attended a state school. And then uh, for one year, I attended a Dutch Reformed Christian school. And then when we moved to Newcastle, I attended Newcastle Adventist School, which became Macquarie College. Right. So in comparison, how did you how did you go at each of those schools? And in reflection now, are there any thoughts that you'd like to share? Yeah, I absolutely loved my high school uh, experience going from, from year, year uh, 7 to 12 at Macquarie. Had an awesome time, lots of great friends, really positive experience. My state schooling experience wasn't as wasn't as positive. It was a, a pretty rough school, and there was quite a lot of bull, bullying and uh, violence and uh, different things that took place in that school, which should have made it a bit of a negative ex experience, and hence why I moved to uh, the Dutch Reformed Christian School. So, um, yeah, quite a quite a contrast. 
Yeah, you've obviously had a lot of a range of experiences, which I suppose in your current role as chaplain is, is quite good in some ways because you can relate to various situations. Have you found that to be the case? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, particularly probably in the area of, of, of bullying, working in the schools and uh, implementing programs that, you know, prevent bullying and uh, working with students, working with groups of students to try and uh, eliminate that in our school. Karen, I'd love to hear a bit more about your experiences, particularly your, your own personal spiritual um, journey. Join us after the break. Hi, welcome back to Teachers Talk with Kyron Jackson. Kyron, tell me, have you always had a really close relationship with God or was there a defining moment for you? Uh, yeah, I haven't always had a close relationship with God. As, as a kid growing up, I had an awesome Christian family, uh, both immediate and extended, who surrounded me with heaps of love and um, yeah, lots of support. However, you know, in my own personal faith journey, I didn't really show much interest as a child in spiritual things. Um, and in God and um, yeah sort of in a way disinterested and uh, but yeah there's a particular point in time sort of leading into my teen years that uh, really had a life-changing impact on my life. Yeah so tell us about that was it a moment in time or, or what happened at that time? I can actually define it as, in, in, as a specific moment in time I know that you know the Holy Spirit is obviously working um, in preparation to to lead to that one particular moment, you know, through a loving family, through great friends, through a Christian education, uh, through all these things. But uh, it was a particular point in time in my life at a summer camp right. at Yarra Happening for all those who, all those campers out there who know Yarra. Um, yeah, and I suppose I was, I was surrounded by a group of friends and for the whole whole camp having a great time but there's a particular night in summer camps at Yarra known as known as cry night or Friday night it's become known as cry night anyway but um, we were challenged uh, to respond to God that night and I can remember as clear as a bell sitting sort of in the back row and I remember the, the Jesus spoke to me through the power of the Holy Spirit and spoke to my heart and said I want to come in mm. and uh, we're given the opportunity to respond in letter form and I remember writing the letter uh, to God, you know, accepting Christ into my heart for the first time, and uh, yeah, which wow. was which was incredible. And I remember just, you know, tears, you know, coming in my eyes, and yeah. 
and uh, yeah, just crying, crying like a baby that night. And it was an awesome, it was an experience that I know that, that lots of people were having there that night who, who actually gave their heart to God because God was so powerful, he was so present. Wow, it's just, mm. it's amazing to have those memory events that really keep you going through your life when you have down times, which I'm sure all of us do, that you can remember back to such clear moments where God speaks to you. Mm. So what, what happened from then? You know, have you... Where has that taken you? Um, I suppose like the, the biggest thing from, from that moment is that I, you know, I had to be born again um, and I had to accept Christ in my heart for myself. You know, I had, had a, a Christian family and had um, you know, a church family and all that, but n- none of that means anything unless you actually accept Christ into your heart for yourself. Um, and so at that, that point in time, that was the moment for me where I was born again and I had accepted Christ in my heart and he gave me a new heart. Um, and yeah, that sort of, that night, it sort of, you know, coincided, with, I had a conversion experience and then that night I actually had a calling experience as well. Wow. Wow. So tell me about that. What, what, what happened and what were you called to do? Um, I remember lying on, on a bunk, um, uh, it was pitch dark, um, and I was, I was lying on my back and I remember just looking up and the presence of God was so strong in that in that dorm room it, yeah it happened yeah, I remember just lying there it was it was completely still and uh, I can remember God laying on my heart the burden to provide the same opportunity that I'd had in that moment that night of giving my heart to Christ to provide that same opportunity for other students and other or other people I should say <laughs> I say students now because I'm involved in chaplaincy obviously so yeah, yeah. So God, I mean, God has clearly led you into chaplaincy. I, I don't doubt that hearing your story. Um, and I'd love to hear in a little while about some of these opportunities that you are providing um, as, as the calling, as God's calling has, has put on your heart. Um, so when you went back to school, how old were you when you had this experience at summer camps? Were you 15? 15, yeah. yeah. So when, when you went back to school, how did this kind of develop and grow? Was it nurtured at, at your, in your Adventist school environment? Yeah, it was. I was. I think probably in hindsight, I look back and I think having the conversion experience, coming to know Christ for myself, you know, I was just super keen to share my faith um, because it was such a, an overwhelming, life-changing experience for me, accepting Christ into my heart that I just wanted to tell everyone about it and share that faith with my friends at school. Yeah. And uh, I look back upon it and just, you know, and I just go, wow, you know, it was, it was during a phase where, you know, Adventist education was going, you know, from a, from a stage where it was sort of for creative Adventist, you know, children to a, a, to now where it's 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 opened up to the wider com- community. And so, I had friends who didn't have a faith who came from all sorts of different backgrounds at school at Macquarie College. And uh, as in most Adventist schools, there's a, a higher proportion of of um, a different faith backgrounds and uh, and different belief systems and. For me, I really wanted to share Christ with, with those you know, friends of mine and different students at the school who, who didn't have a faith in Jesus. So, Karen, tell me, after you went through Macquarie College for your high school experience, um, what did you do after that? Uh, I took a gap year and I spent a year working for a building firm, um, right. just, just earning money and getting claiming ind- independence at the end of that year so that I could go on and study uh, after that. And... After that, I went to Avondale College and spent four years uh, in primary education. Ah, did you feel called to be a teacher? Um, I didn't actually. Yeah. No, I didn't actually feel called to be a teacher. I, I sort of, I, it was kind of in, in that gap year time, I had to obviously, I came to the end of year 12 and, and I really didn't have a clear path as to what I wanted to do professionally. Uh, and at that particular point in time, you know, the, the calling on my life was, was there, but, you know, you know, I always had to think about it, life professionally, and it was sort of like I had to choose a profession. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, I sort of, I looked at social work and, and teaching and a few, a few of the different options that were sort of available, things that were sort of humanities-based, working with people, and I applied to Avondale College to, to do education, and, and I got in, and I... I remember going on my first practicum experience, which was in a tiny little country school yeah. uh, at Ball Blair, and I uh, had a fantastic time. I was only 14 students in the school. 
um, wow. and I really loved it. And I actually, you know, it was at that p particular point in time. I only spent six months um, doing primary training that I, I really enjoyed the interaction with with students and yeah, yeah. providing positive learning experiences for them. So I didn't really feel called to teaching, but once I actually experienced um, the interaction of, of being a teacher, I really enjoyed it. That's yeah. great. Tell me about another one of your pracs that has, in hindsight, was quite a significant um, prac in your second year. Yeah, my second year I went to Port Macquarie Adventist School and uh, my supervising teacher was Andy Mathis and had a, a phenomenal uh, experience with him. He was a real great inspiration to my life. And uh, also during that period of time, I had the opportunity of spending a couple of days uh, at Kempsey Adventist School. Uh, when it was based at South Kempsey and only had 20 students. And that's where you are now, isn't it? That's where it? I'm yeah, now, yeah. yeah. So Which what was it, uh, 20 students back then? 20 students, yeah. The principal was Royce McMurtry at the time. I only had a couple of days there. And uh, yeah, so it's amazing to see the journey from what it was to what it is now. Yeah, yeah. It's, it is amazing to how God just plans and, and weaves, weaves experiences in our lives to, for his purposes. Absolutely. Yeah. So you did, you did your four years at Avondale and then and where did you go from there? I spent two years teaching in a Baptist-run Christian school, okay. uh, Madawi, great school, uh, really positive experience. It really challenged me during my, my time there to to discover and really investigate my own personal Adventist faith. Yes, because uh, I was working alongside you know a whole host of different you know Christian faith backgrounds, um, and so yeah, it really challenged me to really delve into. Um, where I stood in terms of my deeper understanding of my Adventist faith. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And then from there, I, was, I had the opportunity was, was, uh, to go to Lord Howe Island. And nice. Which was, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah a, a beautiful place to, to go to. But I was asked to be a Bible worker out there for, um, for a period. I was out there for two years and had a fantastic time. That's yeah. great. So you, you were leading a church out there, essentially? That's right, yeah. That's the great. Adventist church on Lord Howe. Oh, exciting. I'm sure you would have grown a lot in that time as well. Like yeah, personally. absolutely. Yeah, I look, I look back in hindsight and um, I can just see how God has weaved this tapestry of, of his will into my life. Like I think when I, in, I look back on it and I, I place my life in his hands, he's, it's kind of you don't always have the clear picture in front of you as to, to what his will and what his plan is for your life. But it's always the benefit of hindsight. I think you look back and you can see his instrumental weaving throughout your life and how he, yeah, just, he has a plan. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And after that, you you went to Kempsey, which is where you are now as chaplain. That's right. Yeah, yeah. been at Kempsey now for three years as a chaplain, and uh, absolutely loving it. And uh, I suppose it's kind of in like once again in hindsight, I've used that word a lot. But I look back at my life, and I and I look back to that original calling that came at the age of of fifteen, which was to provide the same opportunity and experience that I'd experienced myself, uh, which was the night that I gave my heart to Jesus, and. Uh, I can kind of see my life, how God has provided me with training, he's provided me with a, ver a variety of experiences to, to challenge me and to grow me into um, what he wants. And it's interesting that the, the, the door of chaplaincy is, has become um, available and open for me to walk into. And it's amazing because I see how God in that role um, has opened the opportunity for me to provide experiences like the one that I had for other people. That's great. Thank you, Kyron. I want to hear more of this. Please don't go away. We'll be back after the break.
Hi, and welcome back to Teachers Talk with Kyron Jackson. Kyron, tell me a bit about how you ended up at Kempsey Adventist School. Uh, it's an interesting sort of story. I was uh, in an interview with uh, Royce McMurtry, who was interviewing me to be a primary teacher at Kempsey Adventist School. Uh, and it was during the, that discussion and interview that uh, he mentioned school chaplaincy and how there was a need at, at Kempsey Adventist School for a chaplain. Right. And, uh, yeah, so it was, it was, it was, he projected that it was a need for a couple of years' time because the school had only had a small amount of students, but it was growing and um, that would be a position available in school chaplains in a couple of years. So, yeah, that's sort of how it, how it evolved. In my mind, at that particular time, I was just like, chaplaincy is a pathway for me in order to fulfil the calling that God had placed on my life at the age of 15, mm. which was to provide opportunities for young people to come to know and experience the love of Christ. So... Um, yeah, I'd, I'd obviously been involved in teaching and also pastoral ministry, yeah. but for me, chaplaincy um, in, that, in that moment uh, became really clear in my mind that that was a, a, a perfect opportunity in order to fulfil uh, what God had called me to at the age of 15. Yeah, and it kind of brought both of your areas of passion together, like that's your right. teaching and your ministry, and to be able to do that in a school setting. Absolutely. That's fantastic. That's great. Yeah. So what are some the kind of things that you do as a chaplain in, in your school? As a chaplain at Kempsey Venice School, I get to work with a, a chaplaincy team, which is made up of myself, uh, my sister, who's another chaplain, and also uh, my wife, So, which oh, is great. great. Yeah. She's the school counsellor at Kempsey Venice School. And uh, I suppose in some ways we all have different functions within the chaplaincy team. Uh, Chanel's the school counsellor and she does a lot of one-on-one -on -one work uh, with students, a lot of counselling and uh, referral work with community health and docs and so forth within the community. Uh, Christy, sort of, she has a real passion for creative arts ministry. So she's uh, completed a degree in theology and drama and she um, is strongly involved in the week of worship programs, which are uh, essentially taking a week out of the school calendar twice a year for both primary and secondary to uh, really have a focus on um, on God and the spiritual life of, of the students and uh, at the school. So, yeah, she's strongly involved with that, um, which is she does a fantastic job. And I sort of play a bit of a, a, a coordinator slash administrative role with overseeing a lot of the different events. Mm -hmm. um, we also have chapel programs which happen on a weekly basis. It's another opportunity that we come together as a, a school community to worship God and, and to celebrate life. And uh, I teach values education. This is where I get to draw upon my teaching experience and training background and so forth, uh, where we focus on a value each week in the primary school and then we, uh, I go to each of the different classes from, from kindergarten to year six teaching on a particular value and then we uh, specifically look at that value in chapel on the Friday. Oh wow, it sounds very intentional everything that you're doing, like very integrated with, with the team that you have, so that's, that's terrific. Yeah. Are there any um, personal stories that you have that your students have, where your students have come to God or re really, any really inspiring things that have happened that yeah, you've seen? There's uh, probably a component of, of school life for students is the camps program that Kempsey Venice School runs, which is, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the different staff have involvement through all the different camps. There's a camps program that runs from year, f year five the whole way through to year 12. So wow. each year they go on a, on a different trip which has a sole intention and purpose of, of building community within the classes that go on those trips and uh, to provide them with an opportunity to, to grow and to learn and, and to come to know Christ uh, on those trips particularly. I've actually just recently got back from Fiji, which was oh, wow. a, a service trip to Suva Adventist College where we had the opportunity of providing a week of worship program and doing a service project while we are there as well. Oh, so. that's great. How exciting. Mm, some, I'll tell you some more highlights actually of, yeah. from the week of worship programs um, that run. These, these programs uh, run twice a year, but there's some students uh, who come to mind, you know, just in sitting here, who, whose life have been changed and they've actually come to know Christ as a result of these programs. And I sort of look back on my own journey and experience and I just see God's leading and it's, it's a powerful thing for me you know, to sit back and have, have seen God work through these programs to reach... Um, students just like they you know program originally you know reach me so. absolutely it's like it's come full circle and now mm. you're ministering in the same way that you felt this holy spirit touch your life praise that's god right. that's yeah. so great yeah. Karen, is there any particular bible story or passage that is really inspiring to you and that has kept you really grounded over the years that you'd like to share 
Um, there's heaps of stories in the Bible and heaps of passages that are, are really meaningful to me, but there's particularly one which is found in Mark chapter uh, 4, which is the story of uh, the disciples on the lake in the, in the boat with, uh, with Jesus. And Jesus is asleep in the back of the boat and uh, the disciples are stressed and overwhelmed by the storm, uh, the wind and the waves around them. And I think sometimes that happens in our lives where we get you know, distracted by the things around us that... Um, you know whether it be in our in our jobs or or whether it be just bigger picture of the world and the events that are happening but I think sometimes we can get distracted and lose focus of the fact that you know Jesus is in the boat with us yeah and uh, no matter what experience we're going through um, that that Christ is with us mm. um, Hebrews thirteen five he tells us that he'll never leave us nor forsake us mm. um, and also Matthew twenty eight twenty tells us that he'll be be with us until the very end of the age so. Um, yeah, this this is the promise of, of knowing that uh, in every situation and circumstance that Christ is with us, it, it really portrays a powerful message to me. Karen, it's really clear to me that God is using you in, a, in an amazing way in the chaplaincy role. If you think about chaplaincy generally, how do you see that God uses that as a powerful tool for his ministry? Chaplaincy is really an emerging profession and an, an emerging ministry within the Adventist uh, church, within the Adventist uh, school scenario. And uh, I'm really excited by chaplaincy because I believe it provides the Adventist church with an incredible opportunity to, to reach the communities um, of Australia. And uh, for me, I have the opportunity of, through chaplaincy at Kempsey Adventist School to reach the community of the Maclay Valley uh, and, and Kempsey. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing uh, that a, a parent uh, or parents choose to send their children to, to, to a school. And um, really, you know, when, when parents take their children and they uh, choose to put them in an Adventist school, they're really placing their, their children in, in our care. Um, and I think that in, in today's society, there are a lot of people who um, really want their children to grow up with, with values and mm. um, with, with a sense of, of, of purpose. And uh, it's really through the relationship that we have with, with the children. We both have this common investment. The school's invested in the child, parents are invested in the child. It's yeah. a, and it's a great bridge to, to parents. It's a great bridge to families. It's a great bridge to the whole community. And therefore, it's through that bridge that I believe that the, uh, we have an incredible opportunity to, to reach um, these communities for Christ and that they have an opportunity to uh, receive Him. Absolutely. Kyron, it's been an absolute pleasure hearing your story today. And um, so thank you for joining me. Thank you. And um, we look forward to seeing you again next time at Teachers Talk.